Okay, I guess we'll open up the meeting at. Uh, you want? We'll open up the meeting at seven oh eight. We all stand for the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, since this is a closed meeting and there's no public comment at this time and there's no public invited to the meeting, uh, anybody that has any comments that would like to send an email, uh, there's welcome to do so. They can address it to our town clerk and we'll read them at the next meeting. All right. You want to give her your email address? Sandy, you want to give your email address? It's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website, so. Okay, since there's no proof to the floor, uh, we'll skip that. Highway, uh, we don't have a report from the highway. Nick is not here. We do have a report from our... Uh, broad. I got a copy of it from water. No, I have it here, Jim. Thank you. It's over here. <coughs> Okay, this is from uh, Clark Collins, our uh, water commissioner. Uh, we had an annual water inspection from the Schenectady County Health Department. It closes a copy of the report which shows that we passed the inspection. We replaced both pumps in the booster station on Ruder Drive. We also had both motors rebuilt due to the fact that they both had over 20,000 hours of usage. We had a break repaired on Ruder Drive booster pump station respectively submitted. I was in contact with them today, looking around, they have a water main break, and uh, they finally found it. it. Took them all day to find, find it. They called me late in the afternoon. Uh, they've been looking for it for a couple days. Apparently it's uh, across from m, m Motors over uh, on the, uh, I guess it's called the East Side Route 7. The uh, they're going to start repairing it tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, uh, Larner is going to be doing the repairs tomorrow. It's, it's over in front of Peterson's. Same area that we've had to break before. It's a little ways down, it's closer to m, m They finally found it. I don't know how many gallons they were missing. Uh, I think it was about 100 gallons an hour. So they found it, and uh, they're going to be uh, repairing that tomorrow. Anybody wants a copy of the report, uh, Sandy has a copy, they can uh, email her and she'll send them a copy of the report. Okay. As far as the, uh, skip to mine right off the bat, uh, buildings and ground, there's nothing really new going on with buildings and ground. We did, we are leased with a the uh, state police expired. We were in contact with them until this uh, coronavirus came up. We were supposed to have a meeting with the uh, with the uh, state police in Albany, and uh, they haven't gotten back to me. And I guess they're off. They're doing everything. Uh, uh, not even any of our offices there for something like this. So uh, as soon as this comes to an end, then we'll have to get back with them and uh, negotiate our contract with them and we'll just, uh, they'll have to make up the difference whatever the increase in the lease is. So we'll have to wait for uh, whenever this subsides. I think we have a uh, report from the judge. Uh, due to the COVID-19, the chief judge has suspended any court activity until further notice. The centralized arraignment process in the second phase, we will continue to have defendants who have been arrested and detained in the Schenectady County 
or Schenectady Correctional Facility during the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. arraigned with the city court judge during Skype arraignment. The defendant will first meet with a public defender prior to arraignment, and then the judge will sign on, conduct the arraignment. Any after-hour arraignments for Princetown will be conducted by, via Skype as well. I would come into the court and sign on via Skype meeting. The defendant remains in, at the Schenectady County Correctional Facility, meets with the attorney, and then I would sign on after, after about 15 minutes. This gives the public defender and the defendant a chance to speak confidentially. As necessary, I continue to work through the last five years of cases needing attention. Many defendants had their license suspended when their cases were disposed. Some had to have bail returned because the process was not completed. Most of the administrative processes have been completed. I have, I have worked through many of those to date. I will continue to go through the list that has been provided to me by the Office of Court Administration. Respectfully submitted, Michelle Van Wert. So that's from her report. This is from the assessment office. Things that, this is from the assessment office. Things have been working out very well in the assessor's department. The restriction on hours and personnel contact has not impeded any, any of my department's workflow. I have been working in the town pretty much twice a week for five to eight hours preparing 2020 tentative, tentative assessment rule, current status, exemptions at this point. In the assessment cycle, all exemptions have been addressed. For the town purposes, 243 exemptions have been granted with an impact of just over $18,000. $18,000, the majority of these exemptions are granted to seniors, veterans, and farm properties. For school purposes, there are 713 star exemptions granted. This result is a saving to the town taxpayers of approximately $37,000. Is that $37,000? $37,000. Thirty-seven thousand, thirty-seven million. I don't see right. Yeah, that's got to be a typo. Yeah, I just read that. I don't seem right. Well, anyway, field inspection. The assessor is required to inspect all new construction as of March first to determine the assessed values. I have been in the field with Isla on several occasions updating our assessment records. At this time, field work is nearly completed for this cycle. Field inspections are done from the public right of way whenever possible. At, at the time of the inspection, I fill out a checklist to determine what percent complete the building at the, at the time, at, at that time. I also take photos to update the information on the town's Assessment files, once I have the information, I determine a new assessment for the parcel. State law requires the assessor's office to notify property owners of any increase in their assessment. Change and assessment notices are sent to homeowners in, an early, in early May of each year. I have requested the town board to pass a local law changing grievance day this year from May 27th to t Tuesday, June 2nd. He changed that. It was June 1st. Uh, he had a conflict of interest there notified us yesterday, as a matter of fact, due to conflict. I forwarded information to the town's web administrator to update the assessment from information on the website on March 31st. I have been working on procedures to modify the normal grievance day format in the light of the current health crisis. Typically, the Board of Assessment Review holds a public meeting to listen to property owners' grievances. At this time, I'm waiting for direction from the county or state. Otherwise, I will require all grievances to be submitted to the assessor's office <clears throat> by May 22nd, I will then send copies to the bar members for them to make a determination. That's from our assessor. So we should talk to him about that typo just to make sure we yes. get ourselves on the right track here. That's, that number, that's, that seems like it's way off, so we should at least call and find out what that number is. Total, uh, this is from the building inspector, monthly report, total permits one, permits issued one, permit inspection fees collected, $48, inspections 15, code zoning inspections one, fire inspection zero, final building inspections one, certificate of occupancy compliance one, bank deposit report $258, check to supervisor zero, 
checkbook balance as of April 14, 2020. Uh, $1,288.24 activities and zoning, working on complaints as needing, working on planning and zoning as needing, working on permit final inspection as needing, re reviewing plans as needed, Thomas Barini building inspector. That's for him. Ben, you're up. I uh, had one incident on Easter Sunday. It was a uh, dog bite victim on Maven Road. She was jogging and the uh, Dogs came off the property, one dog in particular, and um, she must have, you know, she tried to stop the dog, but the dog went at her, bit her in the left leg, and also bit her pretty good in the thumb. Uh, she was going to go down to the uh, urgent care to get looked at, but they recommended that she try to take care of the wound at home. Um, it was pretty severe, I guess, on her thumb, so she had to go and get a stitch, a couple of stitches in on that. Uh, I filed a uh, dog bite report with the health department, and um, they have it now. I, I emailed it to them yesterday. Um, in regards to the uh, rabies clinics, they're all on hold right now. If anybody wants to see any updates on that, to go to the uh, Schenectady County Health Department uh, rabies clinic. Can do a search on that and then they can get the updated info there's probably nothing right now though the one that we had in schenectady uh south schenectady fire department was canceled and um if there's anybody in need of rabies shots they could probably if they may not want to do that they probably want to go to a, a rabies clinic for free but if they need them they can go over to probably tractor su supply uh, they may still be offering them would you get into what happened with its call in Delancey? Yes, yesterday I received a call from Schenectady County Dispatch um, that the sheriffs were en route to a call on Rose Street and I asked them if that was in Princetown because I hadn't heard of it and they said yes, it, it's, it's in your jurisdiction. So. I went to look up the address and it had a different address uh, zip code. I looked at it in more detail. Obviously, Delance's on the other side of Dwaynesburg. Uh, so I also got a, a text from another ACO officer asking me if I had received a call on it. But that's why I contacted the supervisor to let him know that it didn't seem like it was in our jurisdiction. So I contacted the Schenectady uh, County Dispatch to let them know that I wasn't going to answer that call because it was not in our jurisdiction. And they, we left it at that. So as far as what happened, I'm not sure after that. This happened, they, they contacted, uh, they wanted us to, uh, apparently they don't have a uh, dog control officer up there. So uh, they wanted us to go up there and I told them that uh, it's, it's not in our town and uh, we have no jurisdiction there and, and we're not going to get involved in it. So uh, that's the way it was left. And, uh, you know, what would happen if we if you would have went there? Well, first of all, it was a, they said it was a dangerous dog. So there is there is the risk of getting attacked by it, trying to restrain it. You'd have to restrain it with a catch pole. The, apparently, the way I understood it from the county dispatch is that there was a call where the dog had bitten a child and the owners at the house wanted the dog removed. And I'm not sure if it was the owners of the dog or if it was somebody else in there. I didn't get any details on that. Uh, so if I had gone there, I mean, if it was in our town, that would make perfect sense. But for me to go over there, try to grab this dog, and then have to take it down to the shelter, as I understand it, if we take our dog, any dog that I take under Princetown Dog Control, we would have to pay the... Uh, holding fee every day. So I don't even know what the details were of that because I didn't get that much involved in it. But um, if it was in Princetown, I would have definitely gone there, but not, not Delanson, not Dwaynesburg. And, you know, people need to understand if, if you're in, I think as I understand it, there's only three zip codes that are in Princetown. One of them is Rotterdam, partially, like as is here. And then you have the uh, Princetown zip code, and then you have Pattersonville. You have some people that are in Pattersonville, but they're uh, 
uh, they pay taxes to Princetown, apparently. So they would be in our jurisdiction. But Delancin is nowhere near. It's on the other side of Dwaynesburg. It's west of Dwaynesburg. It's nowhere near Princetown uh, line. So there's apparently a, a misunderstanding between dispatch or uh, other levels that they think that, you know, they can call somebody on the outskirts and they're going to go run all over. And it's a bad precedent to set. I, I don't know if others were doing that before, but um, I guess with the liabilities, um, you know, to you, Mr. Attorney, is that we, we're not allowed to go out of our jurisdiction and, and uh, you know, try to enforce the dog ag and markets law outside of Princeton. I mean, I'm not, you know, supposed to be out in Dwaynesburg or anywhere else. So. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, there's no, no reason why he would be any different than going to Westchester County. I mean, it's outside of the town of Princeton. Yeah, that's what I told him, so not to, uh, not to do that. I, I apologize to everybody. We didn't read a roll tonight. Sandy, could you record who's here and who's not? Councilman Holding. Here. Councilman Jack Russo. Councilman Gray. Here. Councilwoman Mora. Here. Supervisor Esposito. Present. Also present is our uh, attorney, uh, Gerard Parisi. I apologize for that. But since it's coronavirus and we don't have any uh, meetings not open to the public, public, it completely slipped my mind. Okay. I got a question. I got a dog that needs her license. She needs a rabies shot. I called the vet and they are not doing it. So what do you do in that situation? If Tractor Supply, I know they offer that. I'm not sure if they're continuing. Tractor Supply the yeah. other day and there. There was no vet there? No. Yeah, I don't know why the vet is, I mean, I there's people in there. I was in two different places at Tractor Supply. And there's nobody there. Well, I guess it's all on hold for now. Um, there's nothing anybody can do and I don't think that any town would, I mean, if you make an effort to get rabies shots for your pet and you can't do it, I don't think that the... Uh, the vet's only taken, uh, you know, emergencies. Right, so I don't think that the... I think that would... It's not uh, something where you're going to go after them for not having a rabies vaccine. Well, I got the thing and it's got a pink note on it. Okay, anything else? I'll get it done when, when I get it done. <laughs> yeah, when it's lifted. That's all we can do. Uh, any questions for Ben? No. Hey, just one other thing. Um, this happens often with people. There's a lot of joggers out in the, uh, out in the hill towns in Princetown. And they, if they're on a public road, they have every right to be on that road. You have uh, people live on the farms and they have open areas and, you know, it's understandable that they want to let their dogs roam on the property and that they don't have any problem. There's no problem with that. But if their dog just runs out into the street harassing people, then it, it is a problem. I mean, they, they can't just run out. So you've got to really keep an eye on your dogs out there uh, with joggers running around because, you know, that, that's the kind of incident that happens. There's cars parking on Ruder Drive that I've never seen before. On Darrell Road, in their jog. I never. I don't even know who these people are. Never seen them before in my life. And two, three times a day, there's people run up Ruder Drive and come back down. Now I'm seeing so many more runners I've ever seen. I think it's because all the gyms are closed, so we're all going there. Could be. Okay. Any other questions for Ben? No. All right. Okay, that's all from the uh, committee reports and public hearing. Uh, we had to postpone that for the uh, public hearing for the fee schedule. And that was for the, uh, for the uh, solar projects in the town, the large solar projects, not the uh, homeowner's solar projects. So that's gonna have to be postponed. Public hearing be called on uh, March 10th, 2020. Was postponed, but I guess we got that later on. So, meeting minutes is hereby resolved with the meeting minutes of March 10, 2020, regular town board meeting, and the March 17, 2020 emergency meeting are approved or as amended. Any discussion on it? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? second? I'll second. Doug did. Doug did. Pardon? Doug did. Oh, Doug did? I didn't hear him. I'm sorry, Doug. Captain Mitchell Baldy? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes
Yes. Councilwoman Mora. Yes. Councilman Gray. Yes. Supervisor Escudero. Yes. Reschedule a letter of uh, annual property tax grievance day. Whereas the town of Princeton has annual property tax grievance day on the fourth Tuesday in May or May 26, 2020, and whereas a grievance day is deadline for submitting form RP524 and the day that the Board of Assessment Review Bar meets to hear complaints, and whereas the Board of Assessment Review and or a town assessor is unable to be present on May 26, 2020, be it resolved that the Princetown Town Board hereby establish its annual property tax grievance day as June 2nd, 2020 for the 2021 fiscal year, the tentative rule of which will be established May 1st, 2020. And discussion on it? This um, is not gonna be permanent on that day. Just the one time no, that it goes back to the board? Year. Every year we have to pass a resolution what the day is, am I correct? Right. But normally it's the fourth Tuesday. But I don't know what the in prior history was, if you've always established it for the fourth Tuesday, which most towns and cities do. It's probably been set as an annual precedent that you don't have to do a resolution every year. I have to go back and check the last time you did it. But I don't, I don't this think year, you do. I think it was always the fourth Tuesday. These people know that. It's like, it's like when you go voting, it's, you know, when you vote, it's, you know, so my concern here is people are gonna, if, unless we make sure that people get this and know this, you're gonna have people that are gonna assume that it's the fourth Tuesday. Well, we'll post it on the website, but uh, I think well, most of the people might ask and be open by it. Well, most of the people ask. Am I, am I correct in that? They usually call it the uh, assessor's office and ask. You know, they always set up a meeting with them first before they go to grievance day. So I'm sure that they would be telling them if there's any any grievances that would be uh, that they're going to present to them. Is that the way you? I do? believe so. If they have some sort of question, they usually call the assessor's office to talk to them first, and then they would come to grievance day. I mean, you're giving more time this year, so it shouldn't be a problem this year. But mm -hmm. going forward, we'll have to look to see what the last. You know, I'm just wondering if we're going to revert to the fourth Tuesday again in 2021, or is it, we're going to. Yeah. Is every year, you know, because it's really not the type of thing that you want to change the date on year after year. Well, here, here's the problem with that. He has five towns that he does uh, that he does. No, I understand the issue. Yeah. So uh, he can't. He can't be at all. All of them on it at the same time. That was the problem. I think he's got five, five times, four, at least four that I know of that he does. He does Dwayne'sburg and he does. Uh, so other people are having it on the fourth Tuesday and we can't. That's well, the, he can only be in one place. So the other three towns that he does, uh, that he's the assessor at, probably doesn't. You know, he's got to change their dates too. I'm assuming. If he was here today. Well, if it's going to be opened up, so you can have people there. That's true too. Well, it's you know it's set. Uh, just have to wait and see what uh, if this is over with by then, and if it's not, I guess they won't be uh, having a, an assessment day. It would probably be expanded anyway. So, but that's the uh, that's what he's requested. So, uh, is there any further discussion on it? say 2021 so is uh is there a motion i'll make it is there a second i'll say sandy councilman Pavoli. yes councilman mora yes councilman gray yes supervisor esposito yes <clears throat> amendment to the zoning law fee schedule whereas the regular town board meeting held on march 10 2020 the town board of the town of princetown Call for a public hearing to take place at the April 14, 2020 Town Board meeting for the purpose of considering public comment on a proposed amendment to fee schedule in the Town of Princeton Zoning Law. Said amendment to address fees for energy permit solar panels to, ins to uh, institute a permit fee of 
0.35 per square foot per solar panel for all commercial solar panels. The current fee is $175 for a residential solar panel. Energy permit will remain the same. And whereas due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the town board meeting held on April 14, 2020 was closed to the public for the purpose of public health and safety. And whereas the town board of the town of Prince Town desires to provide all residents with a fair and full opportunity to be heard on the, pub, on the subject matter of the public hearing, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Prince Town hereby tables the public hearing called for April 14, 2020 for the purpose of considering public comment on a proposed amendment to the fee schedule in the town of Prince Town zoning law and an amendment to address fees for the energy permit solar panels to institute a permit of 0.35 per square foot per solar panel for the commercial solar panels. Be it resolved that the public hearing shall be continued at the next regular town board meeting on May 12, 2020. I'm wondering if it's possible, I don't know this, maybe you can answer the question, Jim, if we could do uh, one of these uh, Zoom meetings? We could. Have... We could do that. Could we do that and say that this is, uh, we will, you know, if the <coughs> meeting can't be held, the, the public can't come in again, that we could do this for the public hearing? We, we probably could do a Zoom meeting. The problem with that is you have to, you have to make it known to everybody. That's the fairness issue. And if somebody says, well, I didn't know there was a meeting, although that's unlikely, but if we can do it. It's not a complicated event. Is there a cost with that? Uh, I think there is a cost related to that. If it's a, if it's a, you know, for profit or, you know, business oriented thing. I know that's how, how we attend church every Sunday, through Zoom. We have our, you know, everybody attends church through Zoom now. Do we have to, uh, sorry, do we have to, do we have to notify people that we're going to do that in the, uh, the uh, ten days prior to the uh, meeting? Well, if you happen to be closed, then yeah, you somehow have to get the word out that they can participate. We'd have to put a notice in the paper, right? Uh, you're, you're really in uncharted territory here, so I honestly don't know, but the more you can do to let the public participate, the better. Even if we put something in the paper, the only problem is, you know, there's a good chance we'll be open, but, you know, they're talking tonight about, you know, laying out Right. You know, laying out the opening of, essentially the opening of the country. So it's possible that... But if you put the attendee I number in the newspaper, then anybody that reads the newspaper could potentially join it. That's true. I didn't hear what she said. What She's she saying said. if you put this, if you publicize it in the Zoom, then anybody, anybody anywhere can attend <clears throat> the Zoom. They don't have to be a resident of Princeton or a taxpayer in Princeton. So that is a bit of an issue. I, I don't know why anybody would because participate in a Zoom meeting. Well, because there's been problems with Zoom of people hacking into meetings. So I don't think you want to publish your Zoom ID number in the newspaper. We do need to get this done yes. because the 35 cents per square foot is a very significant piece of money that's going to be coming into the town as a result of this inspection up there. I mean, we need, you know, Tommy's going to have to spend some time there. We're going to have to pay him, and that's how we're going to pay him. Well, we'll probably make something on it as well, but that's how we're going to pay him, that 35 cents per square foot. I mean, the current law is you publish it, and you have a meeting where people can attend. Beyond that, there's no, I haven't seen any new directives or guidance as to what to do under these circumstances. So what about just written comments? Do people have to be there in public, or what if everybody just sends emails if they have a problem with it, or something? You know, I, I, again, I think you're in uncharted territory. Okay. I think if the board wants to try to, you know, I, the more public accessibility to the hearing, the more likely it, is not to be overturned if somebody were to complain. The best I can answer. You told me, Ben, who videotaped Scotia, said they had their public hearing. Am I correct? 
on their tax increase? They did. Yeah, they had it. Uh, however, there's a lot of people that weren't happy with the way it was done. Uh, there was a because the fact is that people really, you know, you, it's kind of like if you look at Zoom, it's like the Hollywood Squares. And you got to really, you know, try to pay attention to get people's input. And there was a couple of comments uh, regarding that meeting that were left on there that some people um, were trying to speak up and they weren't being heard. So um, in all the technical aspect of doing that, you could find, you, you could have people complaining, saying that, that they wanted to say something, but weren't allowed to uh, speak. It's the way it's controlled. Because there is technical it's gonna, issues. Yeah, it's going to create it's going to create problems like that. It's not perfect by any stretch right. of imagination. I mean, we attend church like that, and some people put their microphones on and their chat. You know, it's, it can be annoying. But the other thing, the other thing is, we're talking about we're talking about May, roughly May fifteenth, May sixteenth. So we're talking uh, two weeks after the target date for trying to get a lot of stuff open. We're not in a real high uh, COVID area. So it's very possible that by the 15th, we'll actually be able to have that. I, I would suggest maybe in the public notice, offer the opportunity for people to comment through email to Sandy's email. And at least their comments can be heard if they don't want to come because of the pandemic or if they aren't allowed in. At least they can have some input. So we could put that as a as the uh, as as a notification for the public hearing in the paper. Yeah, I don't see why you can add that as an additional way for the public to participate. And we can, if we have the hearing, and I I'm, I think we're going to wind up having it. We can uh, have it with the parameters set by the by the president, which is going to be you're going to have to maintain the distance. So in other words, we can't fill this room to capacity, but we can have people sit like we're doing here. So you might be able to hold. 10, 15 people, which is probably all you're going to get at best. Because there may be parameters that they set and say, if you're going to have your meetings, you have to have X amount of space. Well, then we'll play it by ear, and then if they, it gets close, and that's what I'm thinking. Once you post the, the notice in the paper, then we'll do it that way. They can comment by email. Yeah. I'll give them the additional access to the meeting through comment by email. Absolute worst case scenario. We're going to have a June meeting. There's no question in my mind about it. This this is not going to be. We can't shut the world down indefinitely. There's, I do. I have no doubt that we will be having public meetings by June. I, I don't see how. Well, as we get close, we'll see what happens, and if we have to do it uh, by uh, email comment or. I already put that in the public notice that I have ready to send to the Gazette. I, I, Generally, it's known that people could send in a comment if they can't be present for some reason. So, so then we can do it anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. But Ben's right, though. There are technical, technical issues. These are, you know, they make it sound like it's simple. And everybody that has these Zoom meetings has problems. Usually not big problems. Have to do one Sunday. I guess. <coughs> you know, it's going to be. Uh, you know, well, if, if it's if they're done properly, it's, it's, not, yeah, it's on, not bad. So. It's just, you know, you can't control everybody. You know, somebody has to be able to control the mute. For instance, you, if people are chattering, you have to be able to shut everybody down. And then, if you're in a public hearing, that could be an issue. Right, did I get a roll call? All right. We can need a motion. Yeah, we're going to need a motion. I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Sandy. Councilman Pavolding? Yes. Councilwoman Moore? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Yes. General funds claims it here by result the town board approves claim number 55 through number 72 in the amount of $14,933.55. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Moore? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Escudillo? Yes. 
Waterfront's claims. It is hereby resolved that the town board approves claims number 28 through number 42 in the amount of $9,507.43. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Second? Second. Councilman Maloney? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Highway, highway transfer. Hereby resolved that the town board approves. Approves the transfer of $1,500 from account number 99019 to account number You missed five. the claim, Lou. What is that? You did do the one above it, the claim numbers first, and then the transfer. Claim numbers four and five. And then one. That one. Oh, I'm sorry. The highway claim? Oh, the one up above. Okay, the waterfront claims. Is it here by result? That the town board approves claim number 28 through number 42 in the amount of nine dollars. No, no, no. The highway fund. I just did the highway fund. No, she said you missed the highway fund. You missed the claims. Okay. You went you skipped right to the transfer. Highway claims. Highway transfer. The claims. Highway claims. Highway claims. All right. It's hereby resolved the town board approves claim number four through five in the amount of fifteen hundred dollars. Discussion. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavone? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. So now we need a highway transfer. Yes. Okay. Is your brother out the town board approves the transfer of $1,500 from account number 99019 to account number 5031? Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy. Councilman Mora. Yes. Councilman Gray. Yes. Supervisor Esposito. Yes. I guess that's, that's it. Councilman's uh, comments and concerns. No. I do have uh, one uh, comment and concern. The newsletter for the spring, the spring newsletter, uh, well, essentially it has been laid out already. Uh, I, I've worked on it. I had a good part of it done. However, uh, a number of participants in the newsletter, uh, because of the complications of the COVID-19 uh, could not participate, did not participate. I don't want to. I don't want to spend, and the and the town board should not spend a uh, thousand or twelve hundred dollars on mailing and printing uh, just for happy talk. I think we need to have, you know, inclusion from the sheriff's department, from other departments who unfortunately were not uh, able to participate. So for those reasons. The spring newsletter will be canceled. Um, it's unfortunate, but it looks like that's the way it's going to be, uh, unless the town board feels that we must go through with it. I can do it. I've got it, a lot of the work done. But there's another issue, and the issue is, you know, the mailing's about 550 bucks. The printing's another $500. We're going to be losing money from sales tax revenue, et cetera, and so forth. So for a lot of reasons and of, of financial and practical, it makes sense if, if it's okay with the town board, and maybe we should have brought this under business, unless somebody has an absolute objection to it, it will be canceled for the spring, and it will be uh, sent out in the fall. I think uh, I had that on the list to discuss that. I think that's a, a good point over here. We don't know what our uh, revenue is going to be this year because we know that the county is losing uh, a significant amount of uh, revenue, especially from the casino, and, uh, and not, things are not money's not coming in from uh, from their taxes. So uh, I think it's time we start tightening our belt over here with uh, with spending money like this. Maybe we should consider only one newsletter a year, whether it be fall or spring or in the midsummer or whatever, we, we, rather we than spending this that. kind of money. It would save the, remember, the, the big expense for the newsletter 
I'll, I'll, well, I do get paid something for writing it. It's not very much. The big expense is the mailing and the printing um, of the newsletter. Uh, the, the other option is, of course, you know, we could we could send it out electronically. Not everybody has email. Not everybody wants to provide email to the town so that we can send it electronically. But that would be another option. Now, while we're on the subject of finances, and I know the meeting's over, but. Uh, We've got to decide if we're going to fund the youth program as well, because that's another yeah, area know, uh, of savings. I mean, we don't know what, I mean, this sounds like petty stuff, but look at we're a tiny little town here. We're a tiny little town with a tiny little budget and no town tax. So little things like the youth program of 2,500, the, the, the printing and- 2,600. 2,600, the printing and, and, and mailing of the news, these are, all things I understand it, but we may want to consider that. I mean, I, do, do we have to make a, a move on that before? Because that's going to before we know it, that's going to be here. I think we should uh, make the move on it right now. I don't believe that we should be involved in that uh, this year or probably in the coming year. We can discuss it the following year, but I don't believe we should be involved in it this year. I think that we don't know what the revenues are going to be coming into the town. And I think, like I said, I think we're going to have to start tightening our belt up on how we're spending money here. We've got a lot of things that have to be done around this town hall, and the money's going to be very tight. Like I said, we don't know what the revenues are going to be. We had anticipated the revenues, but we don't know exactly what they're going to be. And I think that, that this year it should definitely be out, and we probably shouldn't even be involved in it any longer. It's, it's well, not in, fairness, in fairness to everyone involved, the people that participate, the town of Waynesburg, you know, that's why I bring it up now because I don't want to let this thing go much longer. If we're not going to go, if we're not going to participate, all all uh, interested parties should be aware of that very shortly, like next week. So I'm sorry to bring it up after we were technically <laughs> closing the meeting. No, 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 we're not closing. The meeting. My concern it's, uh, is that you know, if we're not going to have it then everybody with a vested interest in it needs to know about that soon. We're in March, next meeting's May. If we don't, if we wait until May, that's really almost too late. Do you, uh, do we need a resolution on that? No, the only reason you need resolutions is when you approve the participation of the spending. So if you're not gonna do it, there's no resolution. So we're gonna want our agreement, we're not gonna do it? I mean, I feel bad, and for people that are watching this, I do feel bad that we may not have to do it, but we, our number one responsibility is to the taxpayers. And our revenue is going to be cut. We have no other way of generating revenue. So it's not like we could just dig in your pockets and say, well, we're going to raise the tax load. We can't do that. So we have to anticipate a loss of, a certain loss of revenue, particularly from sales tax. That's going to happen. You know, the county's been shut down. So I, I you know, Reluctantly, I'm sorry that these things may sound draconian, but I think we need to do it. I agree. I agree. I agree. So uh, I'll notify uh, the supervisor in Dwaynesburg. We're not going to be a part of it this year. I don't even know if he's going to be a part of it this year. He's going to continue it, especially the way that things are going. So. Well, who knows what things are going to be like this summer, too, with them wanting to do social distancing. Kids may not want to participate, right? I know. So, so. who knows? Yeah. Okay, I will uh, remind you, Sandy, to call uh, okay. Roger and uh, tell him we're not going to be participating in that this year. You got anything else, Jim? Uh, no. No. <laughs> it's uh, probably enough. I just want to thank Jim. Uh, we had a uh, our insurance premium is going to be due, and they asked us for uh, to look over the thing. I asked Jim to look it over too. He did. He made some notes on it. Thank you for doing that. We're going to be in touch with the uh, the underwriter of this, and uh, there was two things that were of significance that we should uh, be doing, and that is, since we acquired the land next to the town hall, we have to insure that land. That was the one thing. The other thing is that we're going to cancel the uh, the uh, youth program. We're not going to uh, have to pay that premium that's in the, uh, am I correct? Right, right. That'll be, that's an, 
that's an addendum, and if we don't have it, that's why I wanted to move this along because I really don't want to pay the premium either. No, we don't know what the premium is. I was going to call uh, Marshall Sterling and, and try to set up a meeting, whether we do it uh, now or we do it. It's not due until when, Sandy? I think it's July. Yeah, so they asked us for it now, but we've got plenty of time, but we're not going to do it. We'll take a review of that from that, and we'll add on to the, the land next to us in case there's a problem. If somebody's injured over there, you know, you could have a, uh, a four-wheeler running through there. Anything could happen. Somebody could go through there and fall or whatever, and, you know, we have to make sure that it's insured. So, was there anything else in there, Jim, that you remember? Um. A couple little things there. I think there might have been something with cybersecurity, but we are we do have some insurance in cybersecurity. I would like to to get a quote on, on possibly doubling that to see if it's a significant amount. Um, we should also I, actually, if if you're going to meet with them, you, you may want to give me a buzz and I'll sit with you because yeah, I'm going to as soon yeah. as this is over. If we've got plenty of time on this, we'll we'll wait and uh, and. Uh, I'll call them and tell them that we'd like to sit down and whenever yeah. uh, this this, this uh, coronavirus lightens up and uh, if it's not a, it's a, not a lot of expense to to, to increase from fifty thousand to hundred thousand in cyber, it might not be a bad idea uh, because there's a significant amount of costs if we have a cyber event. Even though we've taken steps now to prevent that by getting the contract with Omnis to, to, to constantly be updating us. But still, there's expense if that happens. I know that when we had the uh, Vietnam Wall come in, we added insurance just for that, but then it was removed the following year. Yeah. We added, and it was very small, even for the amount of people that we had come. I think it was like a hundred and some odd dollars that it cost us extra for that to ensure that, uh, you know. But uh, I don't think that that's going to be a significant cost, but I, I have a feeling that the youth program might be a lot more for that, I'm assuming, because it's just for what it stands for. Well, it's a longer period of time. It runs for a longer period of time. Yeah. And there's a lot of exposure when you have a youth program. A lot of exposure. Yeah. All right. I'll set that up, too. Sandy, if you can remind me of that one, too. Okay. Anything else? I'd just like to mention one thing in regards to this video. I'm not sure if uh, Schenectady Access Cable is open because all Proctors has been closed. So I may not be able to get this on the TV station. But it, it's going to be on the YouTube channel. I just want okay. to put that out here right now just in case. Yeah, I had called. Uh, I was going to, that the, uh, the last meeting wasn't on. I didn't know if they were closed or not. And yeah. I don't know if it was on. I'll make an attempt to go down there and deliver it, but it may be closed because uh, I know Proctor's is closed up tight as a drum, and that's how you got to get in yeah, there. Yeah, that's where it is on the second yeah, so floor. I doubt, I don't think they are open right now. Well, if it's on YouTube, I know that the, yeah. uh, there's a lot of the seniors that don't have computers. They like to, to see it, and I did, get, yeah. I did get a call on it okay. for the last meeting, so I don't know if it ever got on, and I told them that it may not be on. That's probably why not. Yeah, they probably shut so. down. Okay, a couple things here at the youth program we did. Uh, Tom Barini called me. He's checked on his website from the governor's office about issuing building permits. I know that we stopped issuing building permits because we can't have people coming down here and meeting with them. But he did say that the governor's office has issued a ruling that he could issue a permit to a sole proprietor not a commercial entity, but a sole proprietor if they wanted to do the work themselves on their property. And he's got somebody that's on Duansburg Road that wants to build a garage, and he said he's going to do it himself. The question is to the board, do we want to allow that? That's up to the town board as to whether we want to issue a permit for a sole proprietor to do his own work on a Structure like that. Did the state is. Yeah, no, the state's saying it's okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, if the state's saying Well, I'm just asking this because you know, they can't come down. He said he can do this. They can send him the plans and he can do this. Uh, he'll issue the permit, send it to him, 
and he's been met doing inspections on permits that were issued long before this coronavirus uh, epidemic started. So I don't have a problem with that. I don't, care. I don't really either. But he just wanted to bring it to the town board to ask. Is that all right, George? I don't think the board needs to do anything to get involved in that, if, unless you wanted to prevent him from doing it. No, that's what I'm saying. He asked me what you know if he could do that, so I said I'd ask the board. They can't come down here and come in and meet with him. So, but he said he's been doing it over the phone with him. He's going to send him the plans, and he's going to whether he's doing it himself or he's not. You know, that he says he's doing it himself. So, and we don't have a problem with that. No. Nope. Okay, I'll tell Tom that it's okay. Uh, Sandy had notified me that the. Uh, the town hall was scheduled to be rented out May 2nd, which is on a Saturday, and I think that uh, this was this was done long before this happened. And May 2nd is too close. I don't think we can be letting the town hall out for any parties of any type. I contacted the person via email, and she answered me. It was for a first communion, and that is canceled anyway. So it will be scheduled out later, she said. So it's canceled anyway. Okay, so we're still in a not letting the town hall open until all yeah, this is over. We can't do that. For obvious reasons. Okay. The Hayden contract. Are we all set with that? I didn't uh, get a hold of him yet, but uh, the contract is all set to go. Yeah, except for that. Yeah. Okay. He did. Uh, we did get a bill from uh, uh, McDonald Engineering for a thousand twenty-five dollars. The question is, and I don't think that's up to the town since we don't. You know, there should have been an escrow account put in to do this. Uh, it's not up to the town to pay for that. I talked with Mike today. I scared him a little bit. I thought it was a lot more than a thousand dollars, but uh, he wants to know what uh, if he should pay it or not. And we don't usually pay. We don't pay ever since that we had that problem before. We always set up an escrow account, but we never did for uh, doing this. I don't think it's the obligation of the town to be paying for this. I don't know what the board thinks. Pay for what? The engineering study. Hayden was, uh, 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 McDonald Engineering was here along with Gerard when uh, we went over the contract, you know, writing up the contract and what he had to do to. Oh, you uh, mean to take water out of here? Yes. I don't think it's, you know, we, we don't pay for that. We didn't we don't do that anymore. <coughs> we got stuck with a large bill of five thousand dollars that time. Does he does he have a problem with paying? He wants to know uh, you know if uh, he's obligated to pay it. I don't see how the town is liable to pay. He said he's gonna be paying the town for uh, you know buying the water from us, but uh, that's gonna be up to the town board, which is think. That's why I, I said I'd bring it up tonight. That was just for the meeting, though. There will be more engineering fees, correct? There's going to be more in the meetings? No, more no. for the whole he, setup, right? He, the arrangement was that there was a temporary contract drafted. That's only good for three months, with the understanding that he's going to apply to the planning board for a more permanent solution. So the when he applies to the planning board, that application, there should be an escrow agreement set up with that application. Now, what the bill is for this temporary contract, I would suggest we discuss it in executive session. I think it'd be more appropriate to talk about the executive session as to who's responsible for it. But going forward, it should be the typical escrow through the planning board. You gotta do that tonight then. Do what? The executive session. To do that. If you want. Yeah, let's get it over with. It's got to be done. Okay. Sounds good. All right. The uh, uh, re 
recycle day has been canceled too. So for this year, it was supposed to be what? This coming week? You called me. Yeah, it was supposed to be this week, but the uh, recycle day is canceled for this year. No. That was the other reason for canceling the newsletter. The yeah. spring newsletter, the big thing is advertising recycle day. Since we weren't doing that. Yeah. We just didn't want to spend that much money with postage. Okay. That's all I have. So uh, we're going to have to get this done with him because he's going to have to know what he's going to have to pay with us. So we can't uh, go with it. Is there a motion to go into executive session? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Uh, Sandy? Go into executive session to discuss what? Uh, the, the fees for engineering for the for uh, the water. The temporary payments water. All right. Okay. I'll make the motion. I just want to know. Yes, so Jim, you're going to second. Okay. I'll second. Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Yeah. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Sandy, if you don't uh, want to stay, she can, Nicole will take the rest of the notes. Because we're not going to be that long anyway, I don't assume. 